All right, we'll call the meeting to order at nine o'clock. And it looks like, um, let's see, everybody is, uh, Wayne is not here, so attendance, everyone is here but Wayne. Wait, we had someone else join. There's Dan. Oh, okay. Hi, is this Daniel that joined? Uh, yes. Oh, hi, Daniel. There, we also have an attendee who joined. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is Dan. And you, if you call, Dan's fine. Okay. Well, we got to call one of you Dan, one of you Daniel. So you're going to be Dan if that's okay. Whatever works best. So okay. Thank you. And sixteen fifty nine one eight. Could you please tell us who you are? Person who just joined. Go ahead and unmute. Dan, that's not your phone number, is it? The sixteen fifty and then nine one eight at the end. No, ma'am. I'm just okay. calling from my laptop. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Someone is calling in and I don't know who it is, but they have to unmute. Okay, I guess they'll figure it out at some point. Whenever you figure out how to unmute, just speak up, whoever you are. Okay, Daniel. Okay, we'll, we'll go to item one, the approval of uh, the meeting uh, agenda for today. I move to approve. I'll I second. Say, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's the three of us. I'm sorry, who seconded that? I was getting ready. No, Jean. Okay, thank you. So that's unanimous. And uh, Dan, Dan, Dan is not able to vote, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, through this, we will... Um, we will nominate him, and if he is nominated and elected from our group, um, we will propose him to the board, and then he will be able to vote. So he can participate, but uh, he cannot vote until the board approves. All right, so going forward, we have item two, approval of the meeting, for, or the minutes for the last meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item three, uh, nomination for Dan Vink. Uh, Dan, could you uh, talk to us for a couple of minutes to uh, introduce yourself to our committee? Yeah, appreciate the time to visit with you all and uh, consider my uh, interest in the committee. So. My wife and I, uh, my wife Dawn and I moved to Sudden Valley or bought a home in Sudden Valley about two years ago um, and really thoroughly enjoyed uh, our time there. Uh, we live in Gate 2, kind of near the top of Grandview Lane. Um, what drew us to Washington in the area was just, I mean, the, just the abundance of sort of the natural state around us and the nature. And uh, my wife has a, a sister who has a, a summer place that they use on Cane Lake. So we've been up into the area for past five or six years and and just kind of decided that we wanted to make Washington kind of our second home uh, for now. And then it's going to be our more permanent home as we get a little older and career stuff evolves. Uh, we also have a place in the Central Valley of California. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I have a business that uh, works in irrigated agriculture. So this is kind of a busy time of the year for us. And I was telling uh, Dan Rodriguez when we talked that uh, we spend most of the summer and, and fall up in uh, Sudden Valley in Washington and then the holidays and so forth. And then kind of their concentration and time in California is, is generally in the spring. But uh, that's that's always evolving. And we, we're finding we're spending more and more time up in Sudden Valley. So that's kind of our our trajectory and how we ended up there. Uh, been been following along with what's, you know, the board and always appreciate uh, getting the updates uh, through Facebook from Sudden Valley, and and then we we look um, we I, I actually I look forward to the newsletter that comes out. It usually has quite a bit of granular detail on what's going on. So I appreciate uh, keeping up on Sudden Valley. Really 
value the community effort of it. So the the contributions and the time spent by the board, it's just impressive. And then by committees like this. So when, when my wife and I were looking at it, you know, we said, well, we want to find a way to get involved and give back too. So um, I, I have an interest in this kind of stuff. So what we do in my line of work is we do a fair amount of engineering and contracting and construction. And I don't do that. I'm not an engineer or an architect or a contractor, but we, we work in that field. Uh, and I just, I kind of enjoy the come the challenges of, you know, figuring this stuff out and uh, also just sort of, you know, finding harmony and balance between people and nature and all of that. So um, yeah, I just thought I would feel my time could be uh, valuable and uh, input could be helpful. Then I'm happy to be part of this committee. And, you know, like I told Dan, I'm, I'm full disclosure. Uh, I won't be available all the time. Um, if, if I'm appointed to the committee and the board approves it, then, you know, we would definitely try to schedule our, any, any time up in Sudden Valley around this to the extent we can. I was already looking at some time that I needed to be back in California this summer for a couple of days. And I've blocked out around these meetings and around the site visits so that, you know, if at all possible, I will, I'll be, I'll be present for as many of those as I can, uh, especially initially. Um, so yeah, if you, if, if that works for the committee and you're willing to have me, I'm, I'm willing to be part of the group. So yeah, I think Diane compiles a, a good bit of our information in the agenda and that you, I know you reviewed that and, and that, it, you know, your advice on that is going to be helpful going forward. Um, as far as attending like our Tuesday meetings, uh, our, um, Thursday meetings in the morning, are, are you, and the Thursday meetings in the evening, are those going to be any problem for you as far as no, attending? My, no, my schedule is pretty flexible. Like, you know, I'm in, I'm in my office right now, so there's not okay. kids all around me, but I just told them leave me alone for an hour or two or whatever this takes. So I don't have a problem um, generally with the meeting schedules and the Thursday evening meeting. If there's a way to participate that in that by zoom, I'm happy to do that and can do that. Um, um, but no, the, the schedule from a scheduling standpoint, your the timing works great. So, okay, great. Anybody have any questions for Dan? No. All right, well, Dan, are you aware of the uh, initiation ritual to become part of the committee and the uh, the dinner that you have to treat everybody to? <laughs> uh, no, but I'm I'm willing to accept those terms, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I move to approve Dan then. <laughs> All so second. So, so Diane, what are we doing here? We're just nominating him to be um, approved by the board. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I, 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 I'm in favor of nominating him, also. So I, so I guess um, you're approved as far as we're concerned, and I will um, put your name before the board for final approval, and you're welcome to join us in this discussion and look forward to your uh, votes on the next meeting we have. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll, I'll be primarily listening in today, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, item four. We have Deborah, is that correct? Yes. Deborah, are you the, are you, are you, do you live at 36 North Point? Deborah, you need to unmute. And Bob and, yeah, I, Bob and Carla, would you please mute? So this is Deborah, and I've unmuted. And yes, I live at 36 North Point Drive. Okay, so we I think we spoke to your husband? Yes, he's here as well. Okay. Does my committee have any comments about this one? There's a lot of... Uh, we saw a lot of uh, emails and texts about this one, and we uh, we actually all went all went and visited the site, so we know exactly what it looks like and some of the history behind it. So, um, anybody on the committee have any comments about this at this point? I have none. I was I was impressed with the uh, the extent you. Uh, you went to to make this uh, adhere to a difficult situation and the restrictions that we do have in Sudden Valley. And I I like the fence. It's um, it has um, it's a privacy fence. You've got space between them, so you tried to accommodate our uh, needs as much as your needs. So I 
I like what you put up there. I, I look at this as a, a privacy screen rather than a fence because we really um, we discourage uh, full length fences for privacy. It's just not what Sudden Valley does here. Um, so I appreciate the effort that you've made to uh, adhere to our policies. I move to approve. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. Wayne um, actually is the mystery caller. Oh. Um, yeah, he, he. I think he used the other um, link. And so I have got him on text here, and I've asked him if he wants to vote via text. Can we do that? I think so. I would like his vote on this. Uh, he hasn't responded to me, so I don't know if he's driving or what's going on. But at least we know who that is. <laughs> Get closer. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be majority with um, Joe Jean ex um, abstaining. Yes. Okay. All right, I guess you'll keep trying with Wayne then? Yes. And I imagine when he gets wherever he's going, he'll probably jump in. Okay. Okay, let's move on to item five, solar panels. There is a um, requirement for... Um, did, um, Daniel, did you want to take them in order of people that are uh, online? This one should... Uh, yeah, we could do that. Uh, well, we're let's get through this one first. Okay. Uh, there is a requirement for, um, you know, proper wiring and permit for this, but um, any other comments? I'm sorry, I missed what item this was. This is item five. Five. Thank you. Solar panels. Yeah, I live across the street. Uh, from Parker and uh, I have no problem with this. Did you make a motion? I move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, nothing from Wayne yet, but nope. majority. No, that's unanimous, isn't it? Well, I guess, yeah, Wayne's not officially, <laughs> yeah. He's abstaining, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how we do this. We'll find out later. I'll record it correctly. Okay. Well, let's move ahead to item seven then. That's uh, Warner. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we went and visited uh, your place. What was that? Uh, Tuesday. It looked like yeah. he had three uh, three trees. One is a neighbor's tree. Is that correct? Yeah. So I well, we had the the large tree with the crack in it was um, it, we weren't really sure because it's kind of near the property line. But after my partner had talked to my neighbor, it seems like that's probably her tree. So um, I, I think we could maybe just strike that one for now. I'm gonna talk with her separately regarding that and then we can revisit that later so if it's yeah. okay we can maybe just yeah that was going to be my... our suggestion anyway yeah yeah um and it, it looks like you want to cut the um willow trees down and replace them with cherry cherry trees yeah it's it's more is that of what a you, that's what you have in is that what you have in the yard right now it looked like you had some kind of cherry or something like that yeah yeah i have a large cherry tree in my front my front yard okay yeah, um, I did have a, a certified arborist come out and look at that before I submitted that the request to you guys and mm -hmm. um, the the trees grow pretty much one sided all the branches and all the weight are facing my house and one of the trees is actually leaning towards the house and in the winter when the snow and the ice get on those all those branches bend down so far that they're almost touching my driveway. And the after talking to the arborist about it and seeing if there was a way that we could just trim them up or try to save them somehow, he said as as they get bigger and they lean further towards the house, they're going to be nothing but problems. So he suggested that they I should just have them get taken down. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and you did, uh, there would probably be a requirement for a replacement of the cherry trees, like you stated on there, which, which, which is good. Um, yeah. And I, and that would be fairly immediate too. I, I already have some cherry trees that are about six feet tall that I'm, I'm willing to spend some extra money on to get the, the extra height right away. I was just waiting for approval from you guys before I spent all that money. Okay. Any comments, anyone? No, I move to approve the removal of uh, trees one and two. I'll with second. The with the replacement of the two other trees, two cherry trees. Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Was the second by Joe Jean? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, approved. Thank you. Uh -huh. Item nine, Carla. Carla, unmute. If you are still here, please unmute. She's still here. She probably just can't find the button. <laughs> well, until she does, she was very explicit in what she's asking. We have several uh, applications for a deck with lots of detail, which we certainly appreciate. It's better to over explain than under explain. There. So, ah, can you? I can, now I can, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, appreciating all the detail you gave us for your deck uh, project. Oh, okay. Um, with all that detail, I've decided to change the color. <laughs> so okay. um, I I want to go with the same product, Azek Timber Tech, but instead of going with the gray coastline, I want to go with this color called Cypress. And can you see it? Um, where is it? Oh, well, I'm I'm holding it up, but I don't know if you can see my. You know, if you can see me or, or I just not. see I just see your name. Oh, you oh turn okay. Your, turn your video on, which is in the lower left, I think. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can even reach that. Um, uh, this is not the easiest thing for. Me. Okay, maybe I can do lower left video. Okay, maybe more. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's the mute, and then just to the right of that, it says the video. It says chat on mine. Mine says chat. Does that chat disabled? Uh oh. <laughs> I think I messed that up. Um, I, I wait a second. Is that no? Maybe that's not it. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm doing this on my smartphone so it's probably a little different from yours well carla i think uh any standard timber tech um color should be fine okay um yeah i don't have a problem either uh, but, i'll i'll grab it and put it as part of the record if you all approve it yes please yeah um and we looked at all the detail and um Looks fine to me. Okay, great. Any other comments? I'll move to approve. I will second. All in favor? Uh, that, 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 actually, that would be for all of these. So we're going to, this will be item um, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. The retaining wall and everything? Yeah, is, is that okay with everyone? It's fine. Okay. So, Patrick, could you make that motion again? It was Joe Jean had the motion. Or Joe Jean. Um, I'll move to approve items 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 as submitted with and the I, color change on item 9. Yes, yes. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Patrick, were you on that? Yeah, I. Okay. 
Looks good. Thank, thank you for you. thank you for the application. That was great. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Okay. Let's go to 16. Six yearling place. Hello. This is Luke. Hi Luke. Diane, is uh Wayne around yet? He is still there, but unable to communicate and not communicating back to me. Okay, then we will proceed. Okay, this one, uh, we had some questions about it. I'm glad you showed up. Okay. <laughs> I'm yeah, not sorry I wasn't there when you came. I didn't uh, realize you had arrived when you all came by. Oh, were you there? No, you we didn't know. I was. I was inside um, doing some paperwork okay. for work, but uh, I'm glad I'm here to meet with you now. Yeah. So I, I can certainly answer any questions. Okay. I I wasn't quite sure what this trailer is. It looks like you've got a wire there. Is this storage or what, what are you using this for? No, it's a small travel trailer, uh, our pod travel trailer. So if you moved it to, to this new location, how would you get it in and out of there? Uh, with my truck, backing I mean, it in and out. So I've got, I think I um, measured out 18 feet of available culvert that's sitting right on the corner there, the concrete culvert, that from whenever they had built um, the original, they just left the scraps. So I will um, clean out the existing ditch, which um, is a stagnant, ditch just from uh, general uh, vegetation growth and then place the covert in and cover with uh, the mixed gravel and then topsoil to um, cover that small drainage ditch along the side of my property. Yeah, so I, you... yeah, I have a problem. We didn't see where anything was staked out where it's supposed to be going. So we really uh, there, there's, there was full pink taping where the whole area was yeah patrick i, I did see that tape I, I have a photo of it um it looks like it's at an angle though it's up against a hill are you going to flatten that out or yes i'll take the grade so it's the flat grade with a light slope behind to maintain bank stability okay and trees it looks uh, like there'd be no removal of trees okay actually the trees um are part of the screening process to maintain the front uh, corner uh, from the road and the surrounding areas. So it will be tucked back underneath those evergreens. Um, <laughs> but we, we still, I think we still have a lot of questions about, uh, are you going to build a, a culvert? Uh, it's just or... the, the drainage ditch is already there. It's okay. a simple surrounding drainage. So all I'm going to do is put the culvert according to the Sudden Valley um, stipulations of, I believe it's a six feet from uh, opening from any prior space to add access and then just uh, cover that as well. I think our maintenance team is going to have to look at that and determine if that's something that you can do or if you should do. Um, that's not something we can, we can approve like that. Um, I think there's a lot more information we need about this as far as, you know, holding up the wall. Are you going to build retaining walls? Um, uh, there'll be no build. There'll be no retaining wall needed. So won't be building in like a rock retaining wall. It's maintaining um, a soft slope angle. Okay, so I mean, this which, is... would be, which would be less than um, the surrounding slope that drops into the existing uh, culvert area. So actually the surrounding area would be dropping at a higher pitch than what's behind. Okay, so I, I, Daniel, me, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, I'd like to deny this request as submitted. This sort of thing is not allowed. Um, a, a, a separate um, 
structure to um, well, cover. Well, actually, Joanne, um, according to the Studden Valley bylaws, where property is available but unable to be attached to an existing structure, then secondary outpost building is avail is allowed under the um, building ordinance. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's not the issue. It's more the the type of structure it is. I, I mean, is this a carport? Is this a privacy fence? I'm, no, I'm it's not just quite a, sure. it's just a simple open air cover that will go over the gravel pad. Well, that, and then I, it will have the screening from the front um, through a privacy curtain, waterproof privacy curtain and surrounding vegetation. I, I think that if you if you build a structure like this, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not sure what, what this what this is, if it's a shed. I mean, it does have to match the the house, the siding, if it is a shed. If it if it's not a shed. <laughs> um, I, I don't think what you're proposing is something that the policies would allow. And we still have a lot of questions about the ingress and egress of this, how you're going to work over the culvert. Um, it may be something you need to talk to maintenance about to, to I'm, get I'm, approval. I'm certainly willing to talk to maintenance about, but being that I have the property, I have the space, it would be screened from surrounding and follows the Sudden Valley um, stipulations of not necessarily uh, or not being required when topography doesn't enable, I'm curious beyond um, why this is. No, I, I think I think the, the we did notice the topography replaced, and we know, we know that it it would cause a hardship for you to put it right up against the house. Um, right. That's not the issue. I think the issue is the type of structure that you're proposing. Um, it, it it looks like a, a bit of a carport. But, sure. But it, it's it's not quite. Carports are discouraged, and this one is definitely not really a permanent type of. It's it's more of a privacy fence that isn't quite up to code. So okay, well, I think we I think we all had a problem with it, it's, and one of the biggest ones that Wayne talked to me about was he was concerned about how the um, about the ingress and egress and the culvert, and that's something you would you would have to talk to maintenance about work through that because that's almost like granting another parking space uh um off street parking space it didn't look like it was 20 feet from the property line either well actually from the surrounding property corner it only needs to be a five foot according to the bylaws it's from the front uh position needed to be 20 feet back from the current um uh common access point. Daniel, I think Dan had his hand raised. He had a comment he wanted to make. I'm sorry, uh, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. This is more of a question. And I apologize if I didn't see this nuance in the bylaws and the rules. Um, it's noted in the spreadsheet here that it's a trailer accessory structure. Are there, what are the rules in Sudden Valley about parking a trailer? If, if it is a trailer storage trip, storage area for a trailer what are the rules about parking well, a trailer on site yeah that's one of the issues issues well, that we have unfortunately Sorry. there's a five-year waiting list for the sudden valley um trailer accessory area so this would be result or this would be um removing one of the waiting spaces being that i do have the space to cover such a location and it would essentially alleviate that problem. Now, what I would certainly ideally would be where the trailer is actually is currently parked. Um, that would be my ideal spot for doing it. And, but um, I understand that being that it's in the front of the structure, um, this was not allowed. So essentially I've got just under a half acre, um, which would enable the small structure space but so I chose a spot that was still accessed under the common um, uh, driveway easement off the lower corner of the property. And this is something I spoke with my neighbor about. He's in favor. 
Um, and it would alleviate the need of, of, redu of taking away a spot from someone that doesn't have such ability to keep a trailer. I think if we, very easy. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to accommodate you because we do realize sure. that there's a waiting list on the sure. on the storage area. Um, I, I think what would help me is if we saw a better drawing of the ingress and egress, the work that you might have to do with Mike and how you're going to okay. make that happen, and maybe firm up the the drawing a little bit about how you're going to deal with the topography and. Um, I mean, I was I was really concerned about you know there, it's pretty dense with the trees there and how that's what you're proposing is going to affect the trees, um, and how you're actually going to surround it. Um, I, I think the curtain probably would not work for us um, if it matched your siding of your house. That that what, would probably help. Um, I certainly could enclose the whole area. Um, I would think by doing a similar siding would actually bring it more to site than keeping it in a natural coloration. Um, well, I mean, for my mind, it's it's more, it's going to be seen. It's just what do you see when you look there? It did. Okay. That, that's my opinion. Um, Patrick, okay. uh, Gene, I, do you have any? any, any? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it. Um, staked out exactly where it is because I couldn't determine. What it, it, was, it was there, Patrick. I did see it, and it was up against the slope a little bit. Okay. One of the things. So, so for the, in that case, so the, one of the things I would need to change, I think I um, uh, would be in, uh, fully enclosed instead of just straight open. Is that what I'm hearing? That, that's how I feel. Okay. Um, yeah, Joe I Jean, can certainly Patrick, make that. Patrick, do you have any opinions about how it's hidden away? I mean, it couldn't. I don't like the curtain. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay. okay, that's. I'm happy to make it fully enclosed. That'd be easy enough to do. Okay. So I think we're pro uh, we're probably going to deny as submitted, but um, we do want to work with you because we do want to get that off off that space where okay. it is now. Um, so do talk to Mike about that uh, ingress and egress situation in the culvert. And what's the best way of getting in touch with Mike? Just call the Sudden Valley um, maintenance area or? Uh, I, I can, yeah, I can uh, get you connected to Mike. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so the motion is to de deny as submitted. Can Who I get a second? Motion? You did? Yeah. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, unanimous. Thank you, Luke. Thank you. Um, we have Bob, item 15, the new construction. And his friend Joel. <laughs> You want to talk us through this one a little bit, Joel? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yep. All right. So yeah, we is our second new new construction single family home for this year that's being reviewed. Um, so some nice things about, you know, we do have a flat lot here. Bob has uh, built in Sudden Valley before, so he is uh, familiar with some of the rules. Um, I think... You know, in my report, I noted that some ACC, ACC should review paint colors, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the paint colors and uh, propane tank screening. The propane tank will be, you know, near the back of the house or at the back of the house, but it will be, I mean, it will be in, in view of the, of the the neighbor behind the, uh, to the right of the home. Um, so the, you know, the only, uh, Kind of concern I, I do have about this is uh this 50, I think it's a 52 inch better right at um, breast height fir tree in the back here. Um, yeah, I noticed it too. In pro pretty close proximity to the the excavation. Um, and I think you know I recommended to Bob to 
the removal of that tree to avoid the creation of a hazard tree. Uh, the tree does appear to be shared with a neighboring lot, so I think he will you know, probably need permission from that neighbor to remove tree, and I think he's going to pursue that. Is there anything we could do to avoid cutting that tree down? Because it looks like just about every other tree will be cut down on that property. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is some trees. There are, there is a tree in the back, but he's at his. That, that's the problem with pushing it right to the border as far as um, what our property coverage is. And the, um, yeah, the, those numbers are right on, on the edge. So that's, that's where things start falling apart is more trees need to be cut. And I, I'd like to see some way we can avoid that, especially since all the other ones are cut and then one more that could possibly be saved. Um, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe it is. Uh, maybe there are some options out there to save that tree. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty prominent tree. I mean, and I don't, we don't even know what the neighbor feels about that, do we? I don't know, Bob, have you have you uh, had any conversation with the neighbor yet? Joel, did you say that's right on the border or? Yeah, it looks like it is. I, I have a, a, a photo. It looks like the, the neighboring fence, I believe that's lot 18 there on the top right of the screen. They had actually fenced around that tree. Yeah. Bob, you're muted. Unmute, if you could, please. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, so that tree, as you can see, if you've looked at the um, site plan, is about um, probably less than 10% uh, on the other, on my neighbor's property, not 18, I guess. But um, basically, uh, I am within all the the uh, <clears throat> percentages, and it's already been approved by the county. And this tree, unfortunately, um, if we did uh, if we did let it stay, I what I would want to do is just have Sudden Valley and the neighbor if they were both against removing it, um, just sign a hold harmless disclosure. And I'm happy to leave it because, um, and that way if it does blow over or um, causes damage, uh, I won't be liable. But um, otherwise, um, you know, I'm, we, well, we could try and save it, but I don't, I, I agree with Joel, it's, um, it's, in the, you know, unfortunately it's not gonna work. This lot is kind of um, pie shaped a little bit. So although it is uh, 6,000 plus square footage, so I'm, I am way under, I think 43% is what the coverages are and I can go up to 50%. So, um, so, and there are a lot of trees in the back. They just happen to go up that hillside which might be beyond my uh, property, but uh, I'm not sure anyone were, will ever be able to build because um, it does incline up that hill if you guys have been walked the property. Um, but unfortunately, there's a lot of alder trees on there. And then, some, uh, you know, so, uh, this tree, unfortunately, it's just where it is. So. Yeah, it's uh, I, I was I am a neighbor that had a tree in a similar situation, and I requested that the house be moved a little bit to accommodate the tree. I'm not sure how far this would have to be moved to uh, keep the root structure safe. It it would be a shame, especially if the you know if the neighbor's fine with it, you know that would help you. But if it's part of the neighbor's tree, I would hate to see you forcing him to cut the tree down. Um, well, have you looked at, uh, are, Joel, are you, so you see that dotted line there, uh, which is the property. You're uh, 
up. Uh, so you can see it's probably even less than 10%. I mean, it's not over 90% on my property. So the, the, uh, the, you know, there is, I mean, I can get a hold of my attorney and figure out, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how I've dealt with stuff in the past. But then to change this house plan, you're talking 10, tens of thousands of dollars because this is permitted already. And so unfortunately, if, if, if uh, this committee, uh, even though I'm within all the parameters, decides to say that I can't build this, then I would just like uh, someone to create a slush fund, either Sudden Valley or the neighbor or whatever, to pay for all these changes because this this is going to be uh, this is also going to be really uh, expensive to uh, so you, you can't just go in and start modifying this has been uh, thoroughly engineered and um, and it, so every change you make is uh, quite expensive too I and I appreciate that I do. Um... But it is our mission as our committee to, you know, make sure that any structure um, is considerate of the environment that it's in. It looks to me like there would be one tree left after you're done with your construction here. No, I'm replanting. But but of the original trees, there will be one big tree left in the back there. Everything will be cut down. Is that correct? Um, according to this... Yeah, there's one large one in the back, um, but most of those, like I say, have uh, uh, are the alders, and they've fallen over. All you know, like Joel said, I haven't been back there since November, but um, but they, uh, you know, the alders. Uh, my experience out in Sudden Valley are are pretty much more weeds than trees um, because they, with all these storms, especially the the you know the more storms we have they just tend to fall over so um yeah well unfortunately uh i paid a lot of money for this lot and uh so um i would i i guess what i'm saying if you if you're not gonna prove it um i would uh i i just don't feel like i mean i can do some replanting definitely back there and try and mitigate, uh, but I also can't uh, can't be responsible for leaving a dangerous tree. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, uh, I have this this plan that's all permitted. So I think I'm I'm in a position that uh, that I would just have to speak to my attorney about to find out. Um, because I, I, in all the years I've been uh, building out in Sudden Valley off and on for 30 years or, or over since 1990. And I, I've never had a committee uh, be able to deny me under, under this if I met all the, I have met all the criteria as far as percentages. And, you have, yes. And uh, I also, like I say, paid a lot of money for the property. So I guess um, I guess uh, you you guys ultimately are going to make the decision, but um, uh, uh, I I may not be happy with with what you're going to do, and um, and I don't feel that um, that I, I mean I will try and accommodate everything you ask, but I I don't. Joel, do you know? Um, uh, have you? Uh, uh, I know that I don't know how long this committee has uh, been intact, but uh, Joel's been around at least a few years. Do you know of any um, uh, way that uh, if I've met all the criteria, but that they say that unfortunately this lot didn't happen to have a lot of nice cedar and and uh, firs. It had a bunch has a bunch of uh, weedy alder on it but it does have a lot of trees in back which which will never be built on i know they're past my property but they're if you look at the lay of the land it's they're not buildable back there but do you know of any um 
any uh, way that uh, these committees have denied approval based on because uh, somebody on the committee wants to save a tree? Um, you know, yeah, there was one, I think last year that did have a, a request to at least move the move the house away from a tree to help preserve it. And I believe it is in the policies that they do have that that uh, power to do so. Um, I can I'm looking for it here. I know that I can at least once before. Bob, I, I don't Bob, think that. Yeah, oh, Joe. I'm I, sorry, Bob. Uh, um, is there anything you could do? You know that won't be. You know, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want you to have to spend another fifteen thousand dollars to change things, but. Isn't there anything you can do to move away from that a little bit? I, that's that, that's a pretty prominent tree, and I'd like to at least see what the neighbors think about that. If if I were your neighbor, I would be very upset if you came in and cut that tree down without my um, approval. Right, right. Well, here's the deal. So I um, I built a couple of years ago on a uh, property which um, was uh, near a wetland. And it took me uh, two years to uh, to get approval on that. Now this one isn't a wetland or anything like that. And um, so anyway, I spent over thirty thousand dollars going through that process. And one of the things um, that uh, that 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 uh, I had to do was. Um, uh, or what I did, uh, that, you know, get a variance with the county, but that again, that would uh, totally um, stop me from building this this building year because I'd have to resubmit it, and they they take, uh, you know, they take at least a year from start to finish to do that, and they are thousands of dollars. So, like you say, um, I uh, I didn't foresee that um that that since i met all the guidelines yeah i mean there's always and i've taken down large trees like this in the past um and uh which you know when i think i had one of the largest trees uh uh ever about uh 10 15 years ago it was a huge cedar about five feet in diameter but it was right in the middle of the house and uh, so anyway, I, at this point, I don't see any solutions which would be, uh, you know, under $10,000. Well, and then it would, I'm paying interest on stuff. So it, this could be a $50,000 um, hardship if the committee decides to impose this, this stuff you, on me over this tree. So have rather you than, yeah. Ahead. Have you talked to the neighbor at all about this tree? No, I haven't talked to the neighbor about the tree because Joel just brought it up, um, you know, about a week ago. And uh, so I've just now uh, da uh, downloaded uh, his address. And uh, I actually will be back in Billingham. I'm in uh, Phoenix, Arizona area right now. But I will be back um in a week or so, and uh, I planned on, um, you know, maybe getting the letter together and then uh, uh, physically going knocking on his door and talking to him about it. But um, well, you know, uh, that would make me feel feel better about this because I do know that some neighbors would be very very upset if yeah. they found out that that tree was going to be cut down. And I understand you have to cut some trees down. You're in Sun Valley. Um, but we as a committee have to look at these and determine whether it can be avoided in any way and make sure that the neighbors are happy with it because neighbors do get very upset about what builders do sometimes, sometimes warranted and sometimes it's just, you know, the way it is. I mean, we're in Sun Valley, you're going to have to cut some trees down. Um, my concern about this, this uh, property was that it, you know, it was pushing it right to the borders and you're, you're, you're within the legal limits of everything. The percentages, it looks good, but that one tree would be, you know, the victim of the of pushing it to those limits. And I want to see if there's anything we can do to make everybody happy. 
Um, yeah, I understand. As far as I'm concerned, I, I looked at a lot of the, the rest of this house and I didn't have any other real concerns. I'm not speaking for the committee right now, but um, that was the only thing that stood, stood out for me. Bob, since you've been building here for quite a few years, uh, when you were drawing the plans and, and having all that taken care of, why did you not consider that tree since you're familiar with that issue? Um, because um, basically um, I have never had a, I have never been denied based on a tree before. And, and as far as the, the, if Sudden Valley just had their variance um, program and that was the only thing I needed if that was the only thing involved and it wasn't the county, I'm sure we could um, uh, try and uh, move this house forward um, and remedy, you know, maybe remedy the problem. Um, but uh, due to the fact that the county wants to be involved in all this, um, they have a they have a real hardship. Uh, basically, they don't want people that to do to use the variance process, and if you do, you know they 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 don't want to make it easy. So, um, uh, <clears throat> I guess that that's my reason. I I have never been denied. Um, I have I have had to replant, and I don't have a problem planting uh, several cedar and fir trees in the back, which over time um, are going to make that lot even better than, you know, what it is now. So, because like I say, most of it is full of weedy uh, alder trees and, and uh, in the back, I think uh, uh, these uh, fir and conifers would uh, do really well because as you go back and even walk off my lot in the back, but it goes up a steep hill. I think there's a rock back there. Um, there are a lot of conifers back there. And uh, so, so all, mo the majority of the trees I'm cutting down are the weedy uh, alder trees, which are on the side and the front. And um, so, so really that, Conifer, yeah, it just happens to be there. But uh, um, anyway, hopefully I explained that. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah, I understand that you, you you had to cut a lot of alder trees down, and that's you know that's just typical for Sudden Valley. Um, I would like to see uh, a letter from that neighbor, though. Okay. What did the county say uh, when they're approving it? Because uh, they're going to have to give approval for that tree to come down, aren't they? With it being as large as it is. Um, well, I don't know that they, uh, they, they don't go, they've been, the people at the county have been out there and they don't, they don't determine the size of the tree. Um, they, they look at, you know, they look at the coverages and, uh, if I'm within the coverages, uh, they allow it. Well, who gives, uh, the authority from the county? To cut down a tree if it's large over a certain diameter uh well i don't I again i'm saying that they don't um they don't determine uh the ability to remove trees on the size that isn't that the, the, there's no nothing in their application that i'm aware of and, and i'm a, i'm almost 99 percent sure because they've been out there and they, uh, I, I had it staked out. They were out there in uh, October, I think. And, um, but yeah. Joel, Joel, could you go to the um, landscape plan drawing, please? Sure. Uh, before I do, though, were you oh. able to see this policy? Oh yeah, thank you, Joel. Policies, you know, I just say with respect to the degree to which lot size and structure design affect tree removal, the committee is empowered to deny approval of plans or require redesign or relocation of structure on the lot based on tree preservation and or environmental concerns. So they have applied this before on a previous one. Let's go to the landscape it, plan. And it's not something we'd consider lightly. I mean, this, this looks like a very prominent tree and it is on the neighbor's property also. 
Um, and that's why that's why I'm making a big deal about this. And would love to see what the neighbor had to say about it. So, yeah. So, have well, I mean, okay. um, yeah, I, I guess you could say it is technically it is on the neighbor's property, but it's it's if you I mean, if it was uh, if, if it was six inches more on my property, it'd be 100 percent on my property. So, I mean, we're but, you know, it's not like it's halfway on his property or two thirds or three quarters on his property. It's, no, but you know why people move to Sutton Valley. They love the trees. And this is a well. Look trail. at the neighbor. They they got a fence back there and a dog, and it looks like they cut down all the trees. So I don't. I don't so know they they may be on your trees. they may be on your side on this. So I would, I would yeah, I'd like yeah. to well, I'd like I to talk to them. Yeah, I know. I definitely was going to uh, make a point to go talk to the neighbor. And here's the the thing: if if we can avoid it. Um, uh, I would, you know, I would be happy to leave. I, to be honest with you, um, if if we didn't get into those roots, um, I would love to save that tree. I mean, the, the tree does, the tree is is a nice tree. So I, I'm not arguing that. I just don't want to be liable for it. Yeah. Joel, so, did you picture uh, that tree? Can you say that again? Do you have a picture of that tree and the fence going around it and all? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I see that earlier. So here's here's one from one perspective. Here's this is, uh, stake is showing the corner of where the eave would be. Another view. We had where did it go? There it is. So the fence here's that same corner. This is looking back to the lot. The neighbor's house is up here to the left, and you can see the fence skirts around that tree. It could be that you know, it could be that the neighbor in erecting that that fence, they did not want to pay for the cost of that removal for the tree, or they couldn't remove it either because they didn't have permission from a neighbor, and so they skirted their fence around it. Oh, we don't really know at this point in time. Joel, do you have a shot of the the uh, back of my lot that goes that goes onto the I don't know uh, the the next property, but there it's a that that inclines up a hill. Yeah, back behind you. I yeah, think. and there's lots of conifers there. They're full of full of trees. Look yeah. at yeah, all these all and they. You show some of them there, but see, it goes up that hill, and I, um, and that's what the beauty is going to be is uh, preserving that whole back end because most of these lots are are six thousand square feet, and you you can't you cannot build a house, and this is only a two thousand less than two thousand square foot house, but you can't build houses and save the trees unless Sudden Valley wants to impose a rule that uh, you got to build on double lots, which then you can save more trees, right? But it's just, it, it's not practical. Thanks for that, Joel. Um, could you, yeah, go back to the uh, planting. What What is, could you walk through this a little bit? So it looks like there's 11 shrubs and uh, five trees to be planted. Uh, Doug fir, western red cedar, vine maple. These all come from the, uh, looks like the Whatcom County, Lake Whatcom, sorry. Yeah, Lake Whatcom native landscaping planting worksheet. Yeah. How big will these be when you plant them? Um, I probably get like five gallon. But uh, I, you know, and I could uh, definitely uh, do more of the in the back right yeah. i just did um uh, i just did what really trying to replace those alders that are coming down but um yeah. and there are like i say if you walk back there there it's full of conifers it's just that i don't have uh you know it goes and i i'm pretty sure joel i don't know if you know this um 
that lot behind me is uh, maybe owned by Sudden Palais, but I don't know how that's even buildable because I don't know where the easement would be to get. Uh, yeah, there's a park back there. It's a park, a green belt. Yeah, so yeah. all those conifers are going to stay. Um, the, the neighbor you're talking about, they're, they're, besides that big tree, all those that border his fence are still going to be there, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. There are going to be lots of trees, and if I replant, um, they're, you know, and that's the main thing that I've done in the past on uh, whether working with the county or Sudden Valley is uh, focused on replanting versus changing the house. I mean, I can see if I was remodeling, but this is a, this is a, a you know, a house plan that, that uh, the features in it are, uh, and I am go going to sell it and um, I'm a contractor and, uh, you know, I'm gonna put like $600,000 into it. And uh, I don't want Sudden Valley determining that uh, I need to change the design. So then maybe people won't want to buy it and uh, it won't, you know, or pay another 50,000 to uh, uh, try and change it. And then anyway, I consider this to be a hardship if, if, uh, if I'm not able to, you know, at least do some replanning. And I will, again, talk to the neighbor. Um, I didn't know you could whip around that fast. How are you feeling? What was, was that? that? Who was that? Sorry, I was, uh, someone came into my office. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess um, yeah, we would like to see that letter from the neighbor, but you, Joel, you wanna go, go through the rest of this? Yeah, sure. What do we got here? Thank you. Oh, uh, Bob is proposing to uh, paint the propane tanks the body color of the house and screen it with emerald carbon vitae. So, plant screening is an option for for uh, propane tanks. It just needs to be a that type of if propane tanks are going to be screened, that approval requires community approval. Okay. Dan, can I ask a quick question on the propane tank? Yeah. Uh, is is natural gas available? I know where we live, we have natural gas. Some of the neighbors have propane. It's it's a fairly new option. Is natural gas available throughout Sudden Valley, or is it just certain parts of the community? Uh, just certain parts of it. Uh, I think Gate One and Two have some natural gas. I don't know if it serves all homes, and then some some homes. And other gates do have access to natural gas, but uh, I believe the majority of homes in those other gates do not. Is it a requirement for new construction to use natural gas if it's available? No. Thank you. Do you see any other issues, uh, Patrick, Joe, Jean? No. Is Wayne around yet? Diane? He is listening, but not communicating. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so for the paint colors, I made that comment for ACC to review and approve uh, the siding and the trim color. I believe our pre-approved colors, but because, because of the garage door, so one of the policy requirements is that uh, the garage door be painted the body color of the house. If there's any variation of that, it does require committee approval. So the garage door and front door are being proposed to be painted a different color. Okay. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm satisfied with meeting the other policy requirements. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this all looks good. And again, I would like to see before we 
this is this is my idea, but um, I would like to see a letter from the neighbor. Everything else looks good. That's the sticking point for me. Um, uh, Patrick, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to make a motion? Um, that's that's my. I would like to include that in the motion that we see a letter. Um, would you make that motion or any motion that you? Sure. Okay. Um, I move that we approve a conditional upon a letter from the neighbor regarding the tree. I can second. Jojean seconds. Uh, what, all in, all, all in hold, favor. Hold on. Hold on. What if we get a letter and the neighbor says no? Then we're going to have to talk about how to mitigate that. So the motion is conditional on approval from the, a letter of approval from the neighbor, right? Yes. <clears throat> and that's the neighbor that shares the tree. Who made, that was Patrick, and who seconded? No, Jean. Did you vote? I did not yet. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So that motion is unanimous. We don't have any more attendees, do we? Uh, no. Diane? Okay. So we will move to item six. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Item six, Nine Eagle Crest Court. Tree removal, remove 16 trees. Um, I think we all went out to see these trees. Um, Patrick and I talked to the owner and we identified 10 trees. We thought we didn't want to allow all 16 trees to be cut. Um, we identified 10 that would be, they all looked like healthy trees, but you know, just to open things up a little bit on the property. And there were two hemlock trees that were on on or near the neighbor's property, which you know we can't we can't allow that because we don't have a letter stating that the neighbor is okay with that. We don't have an arborist report either. So I think if we did approve this, we would have to see an arborist report. And I think this is something I talked to Wayne about too. And we could only allow those ten trees that we identified with the owner, so he's aware of them. But we could make it. We could include the drawing. In, the, in this approval, but it, I, I think we would need to see a arborist report and a neighbor's um, approval for those two trees. Did uh, Diane, did they come with anything? He was gonna talk to the neighbor and have something either emailed in or dropped off showing that arborist report. Um, I did not see anything yesterday or early this morning before this meeting. Okay. I'm looking again. I don't know. Nope. I don't have anything. So I, I'm inclined to deny as submitted until we see that letter in an arborist report and we could clarify on the application which trees that we approved to be cut. Does that sound fair, Patrick, Jojean? Are you with me? Sure. You don't want to approve the uh, the alders that he can take down? Um, so they would come out and do it all at the same time anyhow. They wouldn't come probably, out. Probably, yeah. And then come back for it the didn't sound like he was in a hurry since he, I, I think he originally submitted this, what, I two years ago? Yeah, in 2022. Yeah, I mean, I would really like to see the arborist report for those two hemlocks. The alders, you know, they they looked healthy, but it wouldn't hurt to have those cut down just to open things up for the other trees. 
Daniel, can you send me uh, the map of the 10 trees? I can, yes. Yeah. And I'll put it with the denial letter. Okay. Is that how you want to um, vote, Patrick? Or do you want to make a different motion? Um, yeah, you want to. So, what do we want to do? We'll, we'll deny. I'm thinking deny until we, you know, he resubmits with an arborist report for those two hemlocks and we include the specific trees, alders that would be cut. Okay. So moved. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, item eight, construction change, paint. I have no problems. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Who who made the uh, motion? And I second? I did. And who did the second? Joe Jean. Joe Jean. We don't have Wayne yet. Item fourteen. We looked at this tree. Looks pretty dead. I move to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Item 17, 146 Harborview Drive for a fence. We did not see this staked out. And we, it looks like the fence is six feet high, which we can't have. So, any thoughts, Jojean, Patrick? Um, I'm trying to find. Yeah, that's the one where uh, the problem I have is 24 foot of it is going to be a six foot privacy fence. Right. Um, and I don't know if it meets the five foot setbacks on the sides. Yeah, um, what um, Wayne has commented and said uh, that we saw green construction temp fence and back. Okay, if setbacks are five feet met and the, the, the decorative mesh fence set at five feet. Height sent back for flight fight plan showing materials using ACC compliant fence. And then he has a picture of a neighbor's fence, and he said the owner may be trying to copy illegal fence below, and, and the fence in the picture is a solid wood. Yeah, there was one with, uh, there was a fence also on the neighbor's property that was wood and wire, but it was not the wire that we have in our policies. It was some cheaper uh, garden wire. So I my problem was I didn't see it staked. And also the height is too high in part of it. Yeah, and on the side, they show 24 foot of a six foot tall um, privacy, and there's no breaks in it. You know, they can be eight foot with the break in between. Right. And then I don't think they're going to want to do that to enclose their preventer for their dog to escape because they're right. through there. So I would, I would move to deny as submitted. I'll second. Um, I do want to point out the note on there yeah. because I did tell her about the six feet. Yeah. Um, and she wrote back that she it would all be under five feet. So I do want to point that out. And she also said the fence line is not on the property. It is at least uh, three to five feet short. Well, we, we didn't see the, it wasn't staked. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm advocating for her. Because yeah, no, I appreciate that. No, okay. Thank you very much. All right, so is the motion to deny? Yes. All in favor? Who, who made it and who seconded? 
I think Patrick made it. Okay. <laughs> and who seconded? I will second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain again. Okay. And what we want to have done is have the uh, have it staked out and eliminate the privacy, the 24 foot, six foot high privacy fence. Okay. My two cents for what it's worth. Uh, one told Dan this too. One of the things that attracted us to Sudden Valley was the openness. So I would certainly want to make sure that whatever's happening on fencing is well within the existing policies, which seem to protect that openness. And once we start putting up privacy fences, it, it's not going to stop, and the whole landscape's going to change. So I'm not obviously not voting on this, but. No, and, and that is that is the uh, a spirit and intent, I think, from the policies, if if they're read. Yeah. Okay, I think that's everybody, right, Diane? Yes. Okay, so I uh, move to end this meeting at ten sixteen. All in favor? Aye.